What a great sander this is. I couldn't do without it, I tell you. Hello, my friends. I hope you all are all doing wonderful today and having a great day. It's so good to be back here with you. I was uh, updating my sander, one of my sanders that I use, and thought I'd go ahead and make a video out of it and show it to you guys. And maybe you would find it helpful and useful. So I sure hope you do. And let's get at it here, guys. Take a check see. Hey, my friends, this is my drill press sander. And uh, as y'all can see, I've got a wire wheel on the bottom. 220 and, 3 220 and 320 sanding pads here and two buffing wheels. And my sanding wheels are starting to wear out on me right now, so I'm going to replace them. And uh, since I set this up, I no longer need to have a wire wheel on here or a buffing wheel. Believe it or not, I've been using these about uh, probably five years. And uh, they still work, but they are wearing out on me. So I thought it'd be a good time to change it out. And I want to put 80 grit, 120, 220, and 320 on here. So that's what I'm going to be doing here. Let me go ahead and pull this shaft off. Then I'll explain it to you guys what I did here. And it spins. And this isn't where it normally sits. I moved it over here. Yes, I did. I moved it. Me, just whittle me. I moved it over here so I could work on it easier. All the hand tools are over here on this bench. So let me pull this thing off real quick. I'm going to undo the, uh, uh, the chuck and take it out of here for a second. All right, my friends, I've got it taken out of the drill press and mounted here on the vise. And what I've got here is a piece of half inch all thread with each unit, the wire brush and the two mop heads and then the two buff heads just locked down in place between the nuts and so on. All the way leaving the top and the bottom uh, sticking out to mount into the drill press. So I'm going to go ahead and take these apart. And that drill press or the bell bearing probably nicked up my threads a little bit. Nothing that's going to hurt anything. Round and round and round we go where the nut stops only the nut nose. That's boring to watch, huh? <laughs> when you're making videos, you do so many things on a project that are monotonous and boring and all that stuff. You kind of tend to want to fast forward through them or not make you guys watch everything. And I also put lock nuts and washers on each side of each one to hold it in place. The lock nuts are on top of each one. So I'm going to go ahead and get them all taken off, guys. And just like Arnold, I'll be back. All right, my friends, I've got everything taken off down to my bottom nut. And I've, well, y'all can't see that. Hold on, I'm sorry. And on the top of my shaft, I walk, I'm always mark how far my shaft will go into the top of my drill press. So I know how much play I've got. And these are the old papers. Focus camera. Come on. These are the old papers that came off of there. And like everything made in Germany, this is a very good quality made sandpaper. So I'm not just going to throw these old ones away. As y'all can see, the center surface is still good. So. We're going to save these. This is perfect little sizes of sandpaper for the using on the wood lathe. 
for sanding turnings and the paper is brand new so we're gonna keep them after we spend two days cutting all the tabs off that is <laughs> All right, my friend, these are the sanding mops I'm going to be using. They are sold by Storeroom, Stock Room, excuse me, Stock Room Supplies. You can find them on the internet. And uh, something a little unusual here, uh, I think it's packaged in Canada. It says made in Canada right there. Stock Room Supplies. You can find them on uh, the internet. They are, uh, I guess they're sold out of Canada or are packaged in Canada. And the reason I say that, like I had said previously, focus, stock room. These are made in Germany. Alright, not made in Canada. So I can only assume they're sold in Canada, but very high quality sandpaper. As you can see, there's a hole that will knock out in the center and the, the cuts are made into it. I forget the exact price. I think they're like $25, $30 a pack, I think. I forget, but uh, you can make your own. You don't have to buy this pre-made, although they do make a very good sandpaper, like I say, five years I was using that stuff that those that were on the machine earlier but these are what I'm going to be putting on there but first I'm going to show you how you can make some of your own if you'd like to made in Germany where the best stuff is made what I'm going to do here guys is cut down some piece of thin quarter inch material in my case I have a scrap of masonite laying around the same size as this piece of sandpaper which is Call it two inches by six inches if you're making your own. All right, my friends, I've taped the two together on one end and marked out my center. Nine sixteenths inch hole through the center. All righty, my friends, what I've done here is taped both edges. Marked the line at an inch and a half back right there and then marked show up. Come on. There it is. Quarter inch increments across my two inch span right there. Right? Inch and a half back on each end. Quarter inch increments on the ends. Alright guys, that is some scrap sandpaper that I had. Pretty durable stuff. Cut it on the bandsaw. Six inches by two inches. Same size as my board. Alright, my friends. Put my focus. Put my sandpaper in between there. Made my sandpaper sandwich. And taped it up. Ready to cut. 
And no, my cuts didn't come out perfect. Doesn't matter. Does the exact same thing. Sandpaper from the mop. Alrighty, my friends, like I said, the sandpaper I'm going to use is 80, 120, 220, 320. These scraps you saw me cut up are 80, so I'm going to combine them with my 80. When you're putting this paper on, yes, you have to do it one piece at a time. You reverse them every time, down, up, down, up, down, up and offset your pattern straight sideways fill the gap fill the gap now repeat the process straight get it right gotta remember to go opposite every time I get one backwards, y'all tell me. Speak up. Don't just sit there and have a beer. Alright, this is going to go on for a while. <laughs> 80 grit. Packaged in Canada, made in Germany. Stock room supplies. You can find them on the internet. Stock room supplies. There you go guys, that's the 80. Now I'm going to start with the 120. And on goes 120. Repeat that process all the way up to the 320. That would bore y'all insane, believe me. So I'm going to get at it and I'll be back. And I forgot to tell y'all, these little plastic circles uh, you see me putting on the bottom they came with the sandpaper. Uh, there was a couple I made, but they do come with the sandpaper. One with each pack, I think it is. Maybe two, I forget. There we go, my friends. I got all four on. Started off with our 80 grit, our 120, our 220, and then our 320. The 80 has a few more sheets of paper than the rest because of the ones that you saw me make. But all the rest are the exactly the same quantity of paper. The reason they look like they get thinner, the finer the grit the paper, the thinner it is. So, or, or should I say the higher the grit the paper, the, uh, the thinner the paper is. So, that's why they look like they're different quantities, but they're really not. They're all the same quantity of paper, just the, th the smaller the grit, the thicker the paper. Okay! Hey my friends, this is my mounting bracket for the bottom of the shaft where it sits on the drill press. I drilled these two holes here and guys when I was uh, deciding to put out this video I tried diligently to find or remember where I got this bracket from and uh, I can't tell you I am so sorry. I honestly don't know. I don't think it was made for this purpose because I had to drill it out to fit on the drill press. Right? The, uh, the shaft sits down in here on this ball bearing and it locks in place right in this exact point is my center. I figured that out when I built it. But guys, I don't know where I got that. But this is a ball bearing bracket right here that's attached to it, which you can buy at a hardware. And you could simply bolt this onto a piece of wood and bolt it down. Or there's another way you could do it. And instead of just putting mine back together and not being able to tell you guys where to get this bracket. Although you could very easily make it. It's just a 4 inch wide piece of steel with two bends in it. And then drill it down. But you'd need to acquire the bearing. 
And if you can't find that at any hardware, you can find regular old bearings. So let me show you something else you could do where you could make it easily in the shop if you couldn't make this bracket or, uh, or couldn't find this bracket. Because guys, I can't remember where I got it or what its original purpose was for. And I apologize for that. So let's see what I can do here. Oh yeah, we got them. A lot of small pieces for the lathe. All right, my friends, what I did here, scrap of oak that I had handy. I did one center hole with a recess and two holes on the end for bolting the piece of wood down. This is a regular old store bart insert bearing. Let's see if I can show y'all. It has a lip on it. Okay. This one is a flush store bought ball bearing. This one I decided not to use. This one fit my shaft a little better. Drilled out a one and one eighth inch hole. And there it sits. Two knobs coming through the bottom for each end. And that's how I'm going to hold my centering on. Scrap of wood. Hardware bought bearing, two bolts and knobs. Bolts and nuts and washers would work just as good. Knobs, meh. Six of one, half a dozen of another. They'll both work. And here we go, my friends. Scrap piece of oak. Of course, I had to put some lacquer on it, make it look pretty. And I went with the bolts instead of the knobs because the knobs stuck up a little too high. To get into my turning wheel right there so that worked out great and just bolted it through the uh, the slots that are come with the drill press let me show you down below where it's sitting in the bearing and there we go guys just got it sitting in that bearing the the actual nut on the bottom of the shaft is sitting on top of the bearing and there it goes Here we go, my friends. When you want to do edges of wood, hold it better than me. Start over, Doug. When you want to do edges of wood, They're real good for molding profiles. Rough aluminum. This is one end that I did a minute ago as a test. Here's another one with a lot of burrs. I didn't do the inside. Aluminum, copper, steel, wood, it doesn't matter.
great little sander to have around. Works wonderful. Here it is, my friends. All rebuilt and ready to go back in its spot. 80, 120, 220, 320. Another five years probably. I store my chuck with a little strap right there so it doesn't get lost. And I'm going to go ahead and leave my little mount that I made for y'all. This thing worked great. Let's see if we can get under there. There's that bearing it's sitting in. And I did, again, did go ahead and bolt it down. Instead of putting the knobs on, they got in the way of my uh, sandpaper. So, hope you all find it useful, guys. If you got a little small bench top drill press sitting around that you're not using anymore. And you want to make a little walk-up sander where you just turn it on and there it is. Without having to mount these heads in a drill, hand drill all the time and all that stuff. So... Hope you like it guys and there it is my friends all back in its usual spot that is one handy little sander let me tell you and I am very glad to have it making use of a small bench press drill press bench top drill press that I didn't need anymore hope y'all find it useful guys Hey, I uh, hope you guys find that helpful. I really do. These drill presses, I tell you, they are a wonderful tool to have. And uh, I've been working for months on my Powermatic uh, drill press over there on the other side of the shop. Trying to make some upgrades to it, but I just hadn't got it finished yet, my friends. Been real busy lately. Seems I've been real busy all year. But I hope y'all are doing good. I've got, uh, I think, three, four resin projects and turnings that I'm working on that I've got to get out to you here right shortly that I've really had a lot of fun doing. Just hadn't got them wrapped up yet. So if y'all have any questions on that little sanding unit, please let me know, please. And as always, thank you so much for subscribing. I hope you stick with me. There's lots more to come. Especially when I get to slow down here in a little bit. Don't forget to hit the like on the video if you don't mind. Uh, hit the like for all the videos you watch, guys. The uh, people put so much into them. Make a lot of good videos. A lot of good free information you get out there. And it's so easy to click that like button. Or to give someone a subscription. So help everybody out if you can and hit that like button. And sorry about rambling on, guys. Good to be here with you. Good to be making videos. Now I got to change into my grubby work clothes and get back on that lathe. I got time today. And I'm working on getting a few more of those wood samples that I've gotten up on the, up on the list there. And I'll show that to you, my friends, as soon as I get it done. Thank you now. See you in a little bit, and I'll be back. And hey, my friends, y'all probably didn't notice this little guy sitting back here, but this is from a friend of mine, Guy, at The Kilted Guy. You can find him on YouTube at That Kilted Guy. Excellent drywall tips and repairs. Check him out, my friends. That Kilted Guy. And he's got cool stickers. And Jake at Northside Customs does some awesome resin work. Y'all give him a look too. That's Northside Custom Crafts, Mr. Jake. And we can't forget that Doug at the Poe Barn. He is awesome. Just awesome. I don't think he liked my suggestion on his swap projects with him and Ken though. And I hope Kim is getting through with that house, Bill, and starts making some more of her beautiful projects real soon. Hope to see you, Kim. And Zach at Drunken Junk. Zach, my friend. Y'all check out Zach. He is wonderful. Hanging out up there in Nevada. 
Oh, and let's not forget this guy, the over-the-top wood shop. I heard he's kind of okay. Just kind of. <laughs> Told you I'd be back. Had a gentleman do a little pinstriping on the Jeep for me today. Or not today, I'm sorry. The other day. And man, did it come out nice. He just does such a beautiful job on that pinstriping. Really, really did a nice job on it. Check out the hood. Came out really nice. I couldn't be happier.